but it does sound. It, it is working. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Uh, okay, so I guess we can start. So, uh, hello uh, to Modularity Workshop. Uh, so, what we try to do today, we try to create some new modules. Uh, but before we start, uh, I probably disappoint you, but that we probably won't build any modules. And the reason for that is there is a big dragon in our way named Conference Wi-Fi. <laughs> So, because in order to build modules, you need to have packages uh, local on your systems, and that's like hundreds of megabytes or even like several gigabytes, and it's not possible to. Yeah, yes. Probably one other issue is that uh, if you would try to build the stuff on North Intel architecture, it would still download Intel packages so like right a couple days ago, because there is some hard coding things that it takes uh, something in the code. Oh, well, that's a problem. So, Don't write on the Intel machine. Uh -huh. Okay, so I, I wasn't even aware it's possible to have something else that Intel. Uh, okay, so, but uh, what we try to do is to create modules and to have it like ready for, for trying to build it locally. So uh, I assume that when you get home, you'll be able to just uh, get to your module and just run build and you should be able to build it yourself at home. Okay, so can start. So uh, I don't have fancy slides. Uh, I have fancy GitHub repo. I hope uh, it's available in here. It's Federal Modularity slash Workshop. Uh, I already used it a couple of times, and uh, all the content is here. So what I try to do is to get like real steps into our website, which is uh, in here. And so usually I just link to those guides from this workshop. So this workshop is just like a big chunk of links. <coughs> okay, so let's start. Uh, by the way, Steven Gallagher has created two very nice blog posts about building modules. So uh, if you want to like hear, hear it from different kind of uh, pr perspective, you can read it. I certainly suggest that. Uh, so this is the prerequisite I wrote down two days ago. Uh, so what, what we need, uh, or what you need to create modules or build modules is the module build service package, uh, which contains the whole build service, as Ralph was uh, talking about it earlier. And it also has the ability to build lo modules locally. Uh, so also, uh, and what, uh, what the build service does that uh, it mm, it downloads your build requires for your modules, which are packages or modules and which are composed of packages, and it downloads them locally uh, to your home directory. And uh, so, whenever you build a module, it downloads all of them. So it's like a cache. And if you want to like trigger like a get me up to date modules, uh, I created a very simple module in this directory. And here it's like a very easy. Here are very easy, easy steps how you can build it and force it, force uh, the modules to be downloaded so you can start working right away. Uh, okay, agenda for our wor workshop is that uh, okay intro to modularity. I believe that we don't need to do that. There, is, there already been, been like three talks about it, so I I really hope that we don't need to do intro, right? Uh, but if you, if anyone needs it, just let me know and I can do it. Uh, so we can skip that. Uh, also, Adam Shamalik was talking about uh, module MD. So he tried to explain it like in pictures and diagrams. Uh, I can show you the like like uh, how it you how it looks uh, in real. Uh, and then uh, he submitted uh, like a section to this workshop about workflow, how how he envisions to uh, like create the modular distribution for Fedora 27. Uh, so I can describe it briefly, and then we can finally start, uh, like, go through a process of creating a new module. 
Uh, okay, so let's skip the intro. Uh, so I already tried to practice this pre this workshop uh, in our office, uh, and I usually got stuck for like most of the session about this, uh, describing module MD. So I don't want to do the mistake uh, again today. So I'll show you only the significant parts of module MD because module MD is like a pretty big specification, uh, and you can find it in here. Uh, and let's allocate only five minutes to module MD and then just. Let's move again. Okay, uh, it's available in Pagger. Uh, it's specification. It's also a Python library, so you can integrate it into your code on into your infrastructure. And uh, it doesn't have like a formal specification like JSON schema or something like that. It's just this YAML file, and it has a very nice description like what all the fields do. So <coughs> it's really long, and you can read it at home if you feel like. Okay, uh, let's get back. And what I'll do, I'll instead show you a real module and I describe what you can see uh, in the module MD. So I'll open OJS module, we did, which we did for Boltron. Uh, it's pretty short, as you can see in comparison to the real spec, uh, because there are no comments. Uh, so let's talk about the significant parts. Uh, okay. Uh, it's all ordered kind of fine, funkily. So, uh, so in the root of the document, there is like a type module MD and version. It's pretty boring. Uh, an interesting part. So components. That's like probably the most uh, important thing. That's where you specify what RPMs you want to have in your module. So you have components. It's namespaced for RPMs, uh, which is like thinking for future, because in future someone want to invent new packaging technology or other distributions want, yeah. might want to integrate modules into the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So for example, in future we could have also like uh, the package here or like other packaging technologies. So as I said, in here you define uh, uh, what, what packages you, you want to have uh, in your module. And I can see this is not a good example because as so I said, it's Node.js, and Node.js is not in the list. So let me just uh, let me just switch to a different branch because I think this is master branch, and uh, I think we haven't updated it. Uh -oh. Oh. Okay, so I'll use uh, I'll use the branch from uh, Boltron release. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, uh, back again to components. So, as I said, this is Node.js module, so obviously there is no Node.js package in, in the list. Uh, so, what are these three things? So, there is rationale, which means that there's, this is the reason why the uh, package is included in the module. It's like, uh, I think it's pretty important to like write down that okay, this is this is the main package, like this is uh, uh, and it should be included. Or, for example, you can include other packages which are just build dependencies of the main package. So again, it's like good to write it down. Uh, ref, that's, uh, that's actually standard git ref. So you can reference to branch or specific commit. So for example, in here we are referencing specific commit uh, because uh, by default Node.js requires some uh, other Node.js uh, packages, which means that you can't easily build it uh, in a modular way. So what we did, that we did, we created a new commit in this git when, where, uh, when we try to enable bootstrapping, so which means that uh, in that commit, Node.js doesn't require any Node.js packages. So in, in, in uh, like this, we can easily build it. Uh, so this is the boot bootstrapping process we chose. Uh, and also there is build order, and it was explained by Ralph earlier. Uh, I think this is zero. Uh, so, which is kind of redundant because uh, I believe the default build of this is zero, so this line is useful actually, uh, I mean useless. And we have other uh, package in here which is which enables uh, packaging uh, other Node.js module which, con which contains RPM macros. Okay, this component, uh, we don't define filter in here, so uh, API, uh, it was already mentioned, so in API you list uh, binary RPM packages which you support within this module. So in here we support Node.js and NPM, uh, and NPM comes from Node.js, which 
Uh, that's why there's no dedicated package uh, in here. Uh, also profiles, uh, we already discussed profiles. Uh, so we define two profiles in here. So default, that's when you do uh, DNF install Node.js module, uh, it will install these two packages. And we also defined another profile just, just for sake of clarity uh, that you can install just Node.js, you don't need NPM. And yeah, this is mainly for DNF profiles. Uh, what else? So you can also specify documentation for the module. So where is your community? Where is documentation for the software? And where is the issue tracker when you can file the upstream issues or like specific issues to the module? So in future, hopefully, this could be auto generated and it could link to Bugzilla. Uh, okay, dependencies, another very important field. Uh, that's how you specify what modules or what repositories should be enabled. Uh, for during the build and or during runtime, so and I'll show it later in the build, like uh, during the build, like how important this is. Uh, so again, like this, this just means that these uh, modules or repositories are enabled during the build. So uh, when uh, when DNF tries to install old build requires of the packages, uh, which are part of your module, then the packages will come from this module, and you can build your package. Uh, yeah, there are build requires and runtime requires. So this is build, uh, and this is runtime. Uh, licensing. Yeah, th when we did this workshop earlier, licensing was very confusing to people. So, and I believe this because uh, the license and uh, because people thought that when you uh, that module in this context means like a li license of the module. Uh, and everyone thought that, uh, okay, so this probably needs to be like all the software which is part of the module, like where is, it, where is this one just GPL? So the reason why this is confusing is that this is the license of module MD, not the module itself. And in here it's, uh, there it's wrong because uh, we agree <coughs> upon that all module MD files, these recipes will be licensed as MIT, not GPL, so we need to correct it. Uh, and same same thing is for spec files. Like spec files have MIT license, so you, as you can read in federal packaging guidelines. Mm -hmm. And for content, there is a specific field, uh, and you probably shouldn't fill it. Uh, I, I think uh, the plan is to fill this automatically with, with an MBS. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, sure when, when it's going to happen. Yeah, we don't actually have that plan, but that's a good idea. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, it's it's written in the module MD spec, so I, I was assuming it's planned. Yeah, yeah we just missed it. Oh, okay. it, it has to be fine gene of MBS. Yeah, because if you build up something else, you don't have to get the last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and finally, there are summary and description fields. These are mandatory. You need to fill them. Uh, otherwise, it will fail, I believe. And it's just like summary, just one sentence, what, what the module is about, and description, like a thorough description, what's in the module, and like uh, how to use it, or maybe something like that. Okay, so this module MD, as I said, the spec is uh, way bigger. There is tons of other fields which are not used much. Uh, so let's just not talk about those. Uh, and let's move on. Okay, this was module MD. Okay, uh, so the workflow. Uh, Adam has said uh, the, uh, for developing the Fedora 27 modular release is that uh, he created a bunch of, uh, I mean, uh, repository where there are several scripts uh, when he tries to iterate on like what packages needs to be modularized in, in order to have a Fedora 27 server. Uh, so, so the start is that we have platform and host modules, uh, and then there are requirements what uh, what software needs to be available in the Fedora 27 server. So it's all written in the repository, and I just need to find a link. Yeah, it's in here. Uh, okay. Uh, and what Adam does that uh, he like create he sets new modules and uh, sets uh, components of these modules and re regenerates uh, the way the packages are being distributed and it always outputs like like a graph and just like expanding. Uh, so 
this repository or like the content of this repository would be worth like another talk to describe it and what's in there uh, and uh, I believe we don't have time for that so so if you are interested uh, about the process Adam said or I don't know Adam do you want to talk about it briefly hmm. I don't know um, it's basically uh, if, if we are adding new modules to the 27 right now and we don't we don't have anything in there it's pretty tricky to determine what's going to be in what module so they don't conflict and we have everything so this is just for coordination in the beginning but I guess we will be using um, the mod tools or something that will be much smarter so this is just for the coordination in the beginning mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, so, so the thing is that in order to like build your uh, for example on the list uh, of software which needs to be available in the next modular release there is free IPA and Postgres SQL and in order to build these modules you need to have all the build dependencies modularized and runtime dependencies modularized and it's like hundreds of packages so you, you need to figure out like where these packages are meant to be like should there be in one module should there be in ten modules and uh, all that Adam does is that like this work is trying to figure that out uh, so there's like a bunch of reports in here and there is a bunch of mod modules like defined what packages are in there uh, so feel free to look into it and I believe that we can finally move to to the workshop part uh, okay I'll skip this one and I'll skip to the like a real workshop part and let's create auto tools mo module uh, so so that's our task, like create auto tools model. So let's start. Uh, I already kind of said the name, but the name is important. Like usually you d name the module probably uh, by the most significant package in it. So for example, PostgreSQL module be named PostgreSQL, right? But for auto tools, like auto tools is just like the virtual name, but the packages in it will be autoconf, automake, and lib tool. So so hopefully this that makes sense uh, and I believe it was already said before uh, so we need to create a new, uh, stream for it so like so it's available and people can uh, use the module so you, uh, uh, as Matt said on his talk uh, about arbitrary branching usually you name the stream by the version but uh, as you can see like these versions are completely out of sync so th this is one version 2 version 1 so uh, how would we name the stream? Uh, I already asked this question and I didn't receive any answer. <laughs> so maybe interesting idea could be the name the stream right, like the date when the uh, when the uh, when it's created. So for example today, and then when when we update the packages, we can create new stream with the new date or something like that. Uh, so this was just uh, just for entertaining. Uh, okay, so let's create the module MD. Uh, we don't need to write it by hand. I created like a simple version of it. Uh, so if you have it opened, you can feel free to uh, copy it. That's what I will do. Uh, and let's try to build it. So I'm, I'm in the workshop repo. Uh, so in order to build it locally, you need to be in Git repo. Uh, and, you, and the module md file should has to be named the same as the directory. <coughs> so I need to create uh, auto tools uh, directory. I'll sit into it, uh, and I need to create auto tools .yaml, which is the module md. Uh, sorry, I hope it's visible because I have different color scheme than the one in the terminal, so it's visible, but. Oh, it's really horrible. I'm not sure if I have different <laughs> idea. In so back to black one. Yeah. <laughs> to switch back around to the yeah. white card. Uh, okay, so I'll try to switch to. Okay, uh, I'm using Solarize, but I hope I fear that it won't be visible. Oh, but yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Right, right. right. Funny. Oh, great. <laughs> Okay, so this is our module MD. Uh, we can get through. Like, uh, here are the packages we use. Uh, we go directly from Rawhide. Uh, we have the summary description references. So, 
Uh, as I said, we need to be in Git repo, so uh, we need to do Git init Git add and Git commit, something like this. So we have we have the repository. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so in the YAML file, it was pointing to a GitHub repo, and that's I assume that's just because this is a demo one. It yeah. would be living in disk it if this was a real thing, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So this or is just tagger, I guess. Yeah. Just disk it. Yeah, exactly. So this is just just for the demo. Uh, okay. Or okay. So and now uh, since we installed module the service, we can do MBS build local, and here's the time with. Uh, when Wi-Fi will go mad, and this one will fail. Uh, so does anyone know why it fails? So there's an issue in module MD. Oh. No, why? Hmm? Why? So there's something missing in here, like something very important. API stream? No. I know what I can wait for others. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We didn't set any dependencies. <laughs> so the build tool or uh, build service doesn't know how to build it actually because like we didn't set any modules to, uh, as build dependencies. Uh, okay, so yeah. So here is the next iteration. So we set dependencies to platform and host and we do the same for requires. So let's try it like this. Okay, so now we have dependencies. Mm -hmm. uh, we can we need to commit it, uh, and we can build it. Uh, so usually, when you use MPS build local, there's a bunch of output, and uh, when you so in locally, it uses mock as backend. So there is usually one line with locks for mock. So you need to, uh, you should probably wait for it. And once that appears, like usually what I do, I open new terminal window and I tail locks from uh, mock so I can see what's actually happening because right now it's look like it's stuck, but it's actually building the packages in mock. Uh, so that do I usually just search for lock and it said it was starting a new connection with Koji. Did you see that? Is that pulling down content? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. That's very possible. Yeah. Yeah. So it's downloading packages for. Uh, yes, Adam. Um, this is really off topic. What is VY? Excuse me. VY. You executed the command VY. I was just curious what that was. Oh yeah, I should probably say it in the, the beginning. So I'm using a lot of shell aliases, okay. and, and VY <laughs> is Vim. Uh, star dot uh, yaml. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to not to do that. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. I. I, I don't know. Uh, okay. So, so when you put the dependencies in the yaml file, what is the module build? Where is the module build service getting those from? Uh, from Koji. So it's going out and just pulling down. But is Koji module aware? Uh, no, it's not. I, I can answer it. It's, it's the, the name platform master is what he put in there. Yeah. So it asks the product definition center of PPC what Koji tag corresponds with that module screen. Okay. And then it gets the content from Koji to paste in that Koji tag. Okay. How is that defined in PPC? How is that defined in PPC? Yeah. There is an, uh, an endpoint. There are like 500 database tables in PPC, and this model stuff is just in one of them. <laughs> so as I said, like there's already something happening in mock and there are so the build dependencies are being installed right now. Uh, uh, so if you are interested to see like where, where the packages are being downloaded, it's in home. There's a directory called uh, Uh, module module build and there is like cache when that's where uh, all these modules like your build dependencies are being downloaded and builds there that's where the builds are where you can find all the RPMs which are being built from modules. Okay, let's get back. So uh, I believe if I can kill it, I can show you the way this one is. This one will end. 
so so it, so I don't waste uh, I don't know Wi-Fi. So this one will uh, this one will fail like this. So uh, the build dev command from DNF will fail that it can't find autoconf, automake, and help to man because these are the build requires of uh, of one of the components of our <coughs> module. So I'm not sure if you follow what's happening here, but it means that we are trying to build automake or autoconf, and we need actually automake or autoconf to build it. So we need to bootstrap it. Uh, and uh, so, what are the ways to bootstrap it? Uh, there are, uh, I, I tried to write it down on our website, uh, and I, I can show you. It's down yeah, so. Okay, so this, sorry, that's upstream repository for uh, module build service. And <coughs> here in our website is a guide how to build, how to build locally, and all right. That's that's uh, and in this one there's like how to define the module MD and there's the build the bootstrap process is listed in here. So you can do two things. You can either try to bootstrap the package itself, uh, so it doesn't require the build dependencies you don't have any available. So that's what we are trying to do with Boltron. So for example, for Autoconf, I was collaborating with the maintainer and he, he suggested me how can I bootstrap it so. Uh, so it doesn't require autoconf itself and I can build it without the need uh, but that was like very so it took very long so for each package you had to spend like days working on it and if you look at the requirements if you need like hundreds of packages it's like so much work to bootstrap the whole uh, distribution so uh, in the end uh, we started cheating and we started cheating by using actual packages from Koji from the regular distribution to ease the bootstrapping. And that's what I would, what I would definitely suggest to you. And uh, the way this cheating works is that you don't, you, do, you don't use platform or host as your build dependencies, but you use bootstrap module uh, as your build dependencies. And this bootstrap module contains 15,000 packages uh, and there is like autoconf, automake are there, so you can easily build your modules like this. So yeah, it's cheating, but like for bootstrapping, it's like very, uh, very useful. And once you already bootstrapped your modules, you can like remove the cheating and start uh, start going like the module away. Uh, and the bootstrap module is the reason why we probably can't build anything today, because as I said, there is 15,000 packages and it has like nine gigabytes. Uh, for example, on fast internet connection, it took me one hour to download it. And since uh, like you want to build your module locally, you need to download the whole module. And Quantic, I believe, rebuilt it like on Tuesday, so it's like uh, you need to download the new version. Uh, okay, so this for bootstrapping. Like, uh, any questions? Uh, okay, so let's backtrack. Can, can you show us in the module MD what you would do to depend on Bootstrap? Oh, right. Yeah, that's a very Even good if point. You can't run. Okay, so let's kill this one. Uh, so, in order to depend on Bootstrap, you just do something like this. Uh, so, we just set uh, build dependencies to Bootstrap uh, master. And I hope that it's also uh, okay. So it's in here. So yeah, right now we depend on Bootstrap, and uh, right now the build of Auto Tools module should pass. So this, these are the last lines from mock log. You can see that it finished building uh, the packages. So if we had good Wi-Fi and <laughs> yes, uh, what is what is master mean for Bootstrap? Uh, so that's the this is the disk branch of the RPM. Yeah, this yes from RPM uh, namespace. This the okay. it's synonymous with stream two. So wait, so that's the that's the particular stream of the module in one um, But the way streams needs get created is that they're just a disk to make it less confusing. So that's disk get module slash bootstrap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the so good module that slash bootstrap, but it's R it's RPM namespace for No, oh sorry, did, no, it's just get module slash bootstrap? No, or it's RPM slash bootstrap. It's okay. okay. So the the module slash bootstrap. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was same. same. And the, the master there is the stream of the bootstrap module, not of the RPM bootstrap module, which may contain other similar to your master, similar to your other. There is one for the missing sort of module. Yeah. You look confused. I look confused. Somebody said it was RPM namespace, and then it changed to module namespace, and now it's the stream of this thing called bootstrap. No, no, no. So <laughs> <laughs> it's all those things. It's everything you want it to be. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh, I, I said it wrong. No, I think yeah. Tomas said it wrong originally. Yeah. And that led to the confusion. He said RPM and meant module. Okay. Yeah. Um, and module. You don't, under that dependency <coughs> section, you're, you're, not, you're never pointing to RPMs, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I just wanted to correct myself. So this is, uh, this is modules namespace. And this is the name of the disk git repo, and this is the name of the branch, right. like stream. That's dependencies. And in components, that's RPM's uh, namespace. So we should probably make it. You want this open it in this kit and show the profile you're doing? So, okay, so dependencies is module namespace, uh, and components is RPM namespace? Yes, okay. yeah. It's sort of clear in the component part that it says RPM. Yeah. But it doesn't say <laughs> modules in the thing above. Right. Why? Yeah. And I started asking this question and he answered one of the Yeah, there's dependencies are only specified in terms of other models. Okay. And components are the things that make up this model. Right. Okay. Cool. So cool. So if you if I wanted to say, because I'm kind of looking at this from the perspective of like BERT, which has a massive dependency chain. Mm -hmm. You have to modularize everything beneath like in the dependency chain in order to depend on it. Like, so QView has, depends on Gluster, which it does for one of its features. Gluster would have to be a module before I even build. Yeah, all, all Gluster packages or needs to be part in the module. Can you just put all of those RPM depths into a yes, module? Yes, but then what happens when you want a Gluster module? Well, you build multiple right. models. Well, uh, huh? You can build different ones. You can build as many as you want. That's the next thing about this. You can build as many as you want. It. That would probably make more sense to make a Gluster right, you, module. You probably right, probably you probably It's like, what, let's say you have a, Okay, so if you have a vert, let's say you just have a vert module, you've got the vert QMU, all their dependencies, which is a lot, a lot of storage things or whatever. So we push that out of it. And it's, it's literally listing every single, you know, set cluster, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then someone comes along and wants to make a cluster module. Are those going to conflict in any way? They, they will at present. So what? So they, they need to call you up and say, hey, I'm going to make a cluster module, which might depending on mine, um, and delete it all from yours, right? Okay. So what, we would like it to be prettier than that, but we're not there yet. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir? There is a way to search and find out if I need to call somebody else, and be like, yeah, that's, I'm not the problem of your world. That's the tools we're working on right now. Um, so yes, we have one. Um, yeah. And actually, we also, in a related way, we actually want an infrastructure test that verifies it all the time. So every time there's a commit, that it will actually check across everything to make sure it doesn't, there's no problems. Is there a recommended like way to piecemeal this in terms of, say, like, I've got a bunch of dependencies, and how many of those need to be combined in certain ways? So one of the tools that we have um, in progress that we're using to do like free IPA stuff is kind of that. So basically, it tries to make a recommendation about what modules you should create to accomplish yeah, that, what yeah, you that, want. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. That. So it, it does try to. Um, you know, it's still. I, mean, I imagine that you have guidelines around it. Right. That's kind of more what I'm looking for. But if there's a tool that help me, right, it would be the same thing for me. So and that's actually my next section. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry. So no more questions. <laughs> yeah. he has, he's answering questions before we before he addresses them. All these dependencies. Is there a way to do either or? Like you don't care what stream you get, you just have to have one of them. In fact, there is. So, so y'all mentioned that um, if if the if we were to make the Buster module, yeah. it would then clobber the Vert module. How does that? Well, you have RPM conflicts is the problem. Right. No. No. But how how do you then satisfy? Um, 
No, never mind. I was just one question. Uh, okay, so so back to the tooling which Adam is working on, uh, and that, that's the de dependency report. So, for example, okay. uh, here is the auto tools module in in the repository, and uh, he's running like dependency checks uh, for all the modules specified in here. Uh, and for example, uh, here are all the packages which are needed to install uh, like all the packages from AutoTools module. Uh, so that's what this file says, and the other file uh, is, is a readme. Yeah, so there's a readme, and <laughs> uh, yeah, I wanted to display this. Oh. Some, yeah, kind of, some kind of tools generating all this output? Yeah. yeah. Like, have anything, have any channel scripts to figure out how we break it up. Do everything. So, and there's other file which says, like, which packages are already present in some of the modules, so you don't need to modular, modularize it. Uh, and, like, these are these three. So, so the difference is that, uh, like, if you want to develop a new module, it will be great to add the module in this repository, so the tools will start incorporated, and you can figure out what packages are present in some modules which are planned for F27. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. And and me. It's much less confusing. Okay. So if you go to yes, auto tools and scroll down, there is a readme. Uh, okay. And it's package specific. And it shows you all the packages yeah, right here. So this is a summary of all the small files. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So this is like what, what's currently in the module that was needed. And they do it after our dependencies. So it requires to build bootstraps and platform and curl. We have this platform place on the hack to call the packages that are not yet in platform data. But we'll do that. Cool. Uh, hey, Mike? While we're talking about tools, is there a tool to help you calculate the build order of the no, no, you just have to do that in your brain. You need to have a specific lifestyle to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Dr. Trigo, who can't read the letters in the text. No, I know. I have a really ugly shell script that doesn't point out. Which I'm pretty sure somebody just said this is all ugly shell scripts too, so high five. Oh my god, that was really ugly. They are. That, that's a pretty good suggestion. <laughs> so, so one of my favorite files from this uh, dependency report is that, like, on the left side you have the package, and on the right side you have the name of the module where it's present. So, I mean, if we had this for Baltron, it would save like weeks of work because we are so like disconnected about which packages are in which module. So I'm really glad that Adam created this file where you can easily check like, okay, I need, I don't know, audit, like in which package it is. Okay, it's platform, great. Like I need something else, I don't know, libdnf, like where it is. And you might figure out that it's not there. So it's like from that point, it's great to like connect with this repository or uh, and add your module in there and uh, put it in the pipeline. This is way useful. Really cool. Maybe we should do a web application at some point where we sweep. I would love to, yeah. 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 <laughs> no rush, because this like solves the need. Um, so it would be nicer to point people to web app instead of doing a repo where it's confusing. I saw the confusion on Coldspace. So it was like, is this put together? But to run it? Is there a human write this? But no, a programmer. But to run the script, maybe download like nine years data and just run it for 10 minutes and just test stuff and then it's done. Yeah. But, yeah. Maybe we can run it on a server that has access to the code. That would be cool. Yeah. Have you used PVC? No, I just use readme files. I don't have it in my Just use my whole data. No idea what data is. But also, you need to do like real dependency checks. It's not like, like is this package in over there? Like, uh, you really need to like do proper dependency resolution with yeah. like DNF or something yeah. like that. It uses libs, so. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. replying to Honza. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so our module is built, so we can finally submit a new uh, review and get the module reviewed and have it in infrastructure and build it in infrastructure. Uh, so finally, as of like, I don't know, a couple days. Last Friday. Oh, nice. <laughs> we have review process. Uh, so well, we had the review process before that, but it was approved last Friday. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so we have approved review process for modules. 
Uh, here it is. It's in Fedora Wiki. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, we just link. Okay, so we have the review process. So w what I already did, I submitted review for uh, auto tools, but I didn't have time to uh, finish it because there was I believe uh, someone pointed out an issue. Uh, so here it is, like a standard uh, review bug. Uh, so what I did, I just uploaded the module MD file on my Fedora people uh, account, and like there's already some conversation. So once that happens, like you get this Git repo with your module, and you can uh, then submit the built in inside infrastructure. And as I said on our website, uh, there is a guide how to do it. Just like put the changes and uh, do MPS build, submit, and that's it. Yeah, so the important point is that you don't use Fed package to interact with the build tools. Yes, Adam? Um, wh why on the testing? Why do we go from other testing framework to another testing Give me a minute. I will talk about this around 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but so the main guy is in the corner. <laughs> Who I mean selected the meta test penalty? That sounds <laughs> it's the one. Sounds right. Not the one right, framework. Not the big one. Not the to module. It tests a lot more things than module stuff. So. Yeah. Okay. When you have a module, how do you how do you do the equivalence? How do you kick off the equivalence in infrastructure of a fed package build? Uh, it's MBS build uh, submit. MBS build is the command. Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's all the plan is to keep it standalone. I, I don't know. Uh, I, don't I, I would really like to see it roll into Fed Package okay. itself, um, which I haven't gotten to it yet. Because Mike Hulk did not agree in earlier. And I was yeah, well, I, just, I can understand the move faster. Uh, okay, so we skip testing because this, this is the next session. Is there any, I mean, I, I'm assuming this is coming, is there any talk to one of all these dependencies that are already, uh, like in the, the initial package that you get set up, you have to all these RPMs and you have to build modules and stuff like that. Is there any? Just have to do one, 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 and just the and a protocol and build all those packages. Is that, I know you guys are talking about doing some sort of story and things like that, but if I want to build it myself initially, I have to go and build a bunch of RPMs and I have to build mocks on top of that. And I have to no, it builds here. Okay, okay, that's what I was, I didn't yeah, understand. No, it does. <laughs> yeah, wait. So you have to build a spec file and the NPS, or the module on file to do this. You have to find the spec file. And, and I don't have to build a part, I have an RPM separately. I can just define that. And right. Right. And then in terms of the review process, is it two separate things? Yeah, if, you wanted, yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to add a new RPM, you still have to go through that process. And then if you want to add modules, then through that, you have to go through the review process for that. Yeah. We, may, we may look to That's how I asked. Yeah, and that's how I Because now we have three different review processes, right? We have the container one, we have the module one, we have the RPM yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it seems. I mean, it, it's you know, a lot of make a lot layers. Of easier, right? Containers? No. But I thought that was a package. <laughs> I just think there's a lot of layers yeah, there, and I was really really trying to figure out how I would use it and start doing this, because I'm going to be starting to build this very soon. That's what my drum is. I'm just going to like, use <laughs> my drum, swear, I'm just going to beat it, and it's going to fall apart. Right? There's three parts. I've got it up right. for a minute every session. Uh, so okay, so... Well, not that it's done, it's that. So, yeah. so that's yeah. probably the uh, end of this workshop, like, unless you have more questions. So. Uh, we actually we were actually running a feedback form internally, but in internal feedback form is not very helpful for community. Like, so uh, Irina from our team uh, changed it to uh, open Google Doc. It's available in this link. So if you have like any questions, feel free to put them in. And uh, I hope that at some point we put the we put the Q and A. I don't know in, in our website or something like that. So this this is your feedback form, like on this. Uh, this so isn't the Voltron feedback. So, so we started like internal feedback form for the other group to get like feedback on like how to build modules. Oh, and, okay, right. and yeah, it's not the same as the Voltron. That's uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like this is like different. So, uh, and uh, I probably missed a bit. So all of us hang out at RC channel Federal Modularity. That's al also the place like once you submit the uh, review or. Like if you have some questions, feel free to connect to it, and someone will reply from the contact. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so this is kind of like a this is a technical question, not that technical, but like when so I'm looking in Koji right now at the Yagile package Y A G L J L. 
it's like a small library. So I see all these builds that have module in the name, like the package name, right? I, I know the module build system sticks that in and then rebuilds it. And then there's like a git tag, it's also in the name, correct? What does that put, what does that point? It's not a git tag. Not a git tag. Um, it is uh, a hash of the module stream name that it's a part of. We originally had that this tag be module underscore platform underscore master, so you could look at it and know what it was. And we ran into a limitation in Koji's database for the NPR name couldn't be longer than 50 characters. So we started hashing it to make it small. That database change has now been fixed, so it's just a matter of time okay. cycles to switch it back to be a meaningful name. Okay, um, so you'll be able to look at a build in Koji and see know. what module it's coming from. Again? You'll, you'll be able to look at a build in Koji and see, like, what did, what did you say that new format's going to be, the more descriptive one? Module underscore what? Yeah, there are there are several other problems with those long names. Uh, one is that some packages expand the this tag and use it because of where somehow, for example, kernel. And they have limited data structures and the long list tag don't relate to the there's no way to use that. So another thing is that you have component reuse, and uh, if you have the same RPM for the previous thing, and you reuse it in, in the future in a different mode or a different stream, this would be just confusing. So, so the answer to your question though is you want to be able to look at Koji and figure out what module builds these are a part of. Yeah, because I mean, my first thought was is this part of a module, and then I go to try to check it out, but it's not, and then I don't, I, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not standalone module, yeah. right? Which I think it could be, but it's right. not. So I have no, I don't know how to map that back to where, what module in D file has yeah. the actual. Guy, Guy Martin wrote the patch to the module build service. It keeps internally a list of all the components it ever built. So you, you should be able to ask it, take one of these MDRs and ask the service, what model build is this part of? And it'll tell you. But we never expose it in the API. The fact that it got written last week, it's not exploded yeah. yet. So the model build, build service doesn't have a web view, does it? It's just JSON API. Yeah. And does it have a command line tool to do with that? Or do I need to actually use yeah. it, like write a script to talk to it? Like, I need to write a script to give it to you. Oh, I see. How about that? You can write it yourself. It's not written, but yeah. <coughs> yeah but I'll if just you write it, tell me. <laughs> and then I won't. <laughs> So like this, it, this is what it is. Yeah, so for example, I can query uh, the build service and see lost uh, lost module builds, unless the internet works. <laughs> no, this is, this is normal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Th that's why I limited to just 15. <laughs> and uh, is, th is there also a command which uh, also shows which RPMs are, are built in the specific uh, module build? Yeah, you need to watch it. Uh, uh -huh. You just run, yeah. uh -huh. you see the build IDs, so you can do MBS build, watch, and search the build ID, and you will see the RPMs that are being built. For example, mm -hmm. I'm building three <coughs> modules right now, so you can query one of them, so you will see. Yes. Uh, okay, so this one is just quite unpicked. But I thought we had some, some like info, oh. right? No. What do you mean? Oh, it is. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's your code. Yeah, so it's nice to find the code. <laughs> this lets you go one way where if you know the module build you can find out what components are in it, and again to your question, it's going the other way that we just is in the process of getting a given a, a code you build what's in the uh, so this okay. probably all uh, in five minutes or seven minutes we'll have the other part when we go to uh, through how to test modules and <coughs> containers. So thank you for attending.